Uh, welcome. Uh, obviously, Fire Service Commissioner for Victoria. Uh, with me today is the Chief Health Officer, Rosemary, uh, Dr. Rosemary Lister. Uh, and from uh, Ambulance Victoria is Paul, one of our local paramedics, and Aguirre from DHS, who's running the, reco the recovery and relocation part of the emergency. Um, just quickly, the fire has been uh, suppressed overnight and great success. So that's a great story for our firefighters over the last 24 hours. Still a lot of work in front of them and there's still smoke being issued obviously from the open cut. Um, but the amount of work that's been done and the success of cooling, putting out fire is of note. And uh, we've obviously run thermal cameras over the fire this morning and it's been very clear that we've reduced the amount of fire, particularly in the northern battens, which uh, are the, the batters that are the closest to Moorwall. Uh, that's a good story and obviously morale of our firefighters and safety has been critical. Uh, I might hand over straight to Aguirre, he'll take us through the relocation um, story for today. Thanks Craig. Aguirre Alessandratis, uh, Director in Gippsland. Just want to start by saying that our 1800 number continues to operate and we're receiving lots of information, lots of um, inquiries from the community directly. So that's our um, first port of call into our response. Um, our community respite centre obviously um, is there for respite for um, uh, people within the Moorwell community, the broad Moorwell community, and we're um, receiving people and assisting them through that um, centre. I just want to take a moment just to talk a little, a little bit about a, a story of a 90-year-old um, lady who um, presented at the respite centre. Our staff received her. Um, she had a, a range of mobility issues. We processed and assisted her through the 1800 helpline um, we transported her back to uh, our receiving centres um, and were able to um, package up a range of supports and accommodate that um, lady um, within a couple of hours. That's the sort of story that we're seeing quite a bit. Um, many people arriving at um, respite centres and obviously through the 1800 um, helpline. And of course we're assisting a whole range of people, both for respite um, purposes and relocation purposes. We have a significant amount of staff on, on the ground um, and both our, um, our own staff, so over 70 staff from the department, we have volunteers from the Red Cross and from the Victorian Council of Churches. Um, we have La Trobe City Council who have been fantastic partnering, being able to partner up the range of um, supports that we have in place. And across our three centres, our respite and relocation assistance centres, people have been fantastic and the community has been absolutely brilliant, I think, in terms of the impact that um, they're facing, but their um, capacity to engage with our staff and for our staff to be able to work with them on a one-to-one -one basis and to be able to assist them both for respite purposes but also for relocation purposes. Just to give you some numbers, um, number of calls to date. So this is since um, um, uh, up until yesterday afternoon. We've um, had received 2,667 calls um, uh, up until that point in time. Of those, 2,347 were for the purposes of respite and 320 were for the purposes of relocation. Again, as of um, 6 p.m. last night, um, we uh, made a total of 448 respite payments directly to people, and those payments are specifically to be able to take some time out of the smoke environments and have an opportunity to do something different. Um, we made a total of 170, uh, 106 relocation payments. Again, they are individual, individual um, packages of support that we have sat down and talked with each of those community members who are wishing to relocate. And can I say that the majority of those um, community members are choosing to make their own decisions about relocation. That's the, the majority of the, of, of, the, um, of the community. We have uh, another 280 appointments scheduled for today. And um, we are prioritising um, appointments for those people that want to relocate. That's our um, prior priority for today. And we're trying to um, get as many through as possible. And of course, we're monitoring that in terms of the capacity um, and um, what else we might need to put in place. Um, again, um, a tremendous effort by a whole range of people to get out there and support the community. I think it's been absolutely fantastic. The community, um, I think, have been great in terms of the, their patience and the, perse the perseverance given the range of impacts that they've been experiencing. Thank you. I'll introduce uh, paramedic Paul James. Thanks, Paul. Where you have paramedics currently working in the Community Health Assessment Centre, which we're now affectionately calling the shack. Um, 
down at the shack, they've assessed over 900 residents and visitors to Morwell today. Uh, yesterday, they did health assessments on 167 residents and visitors. Um, of those, 141 were tested for their carbon monoxide levels. In the end, we referred one of those people to their own local doctor for some health issues that were assessed. And a further one person was transported to La Trobe Community Hospital. So that's over 900 people have gone through those free health assessments to date. This morning, there's been over 50 people already. Out at the Hazelwood Open Cut Mine, uh, there's health assessments going on for the firemen, for the workers, for the other emergency service personnel. Yesterday they checked 1,550 people in the 24 hour period. Of those 1,550 people, our paramedics had to do further assessments on three. Out of those three, we transported just one to La Trobe Hospital for some further assessments. So they're pretty good numbers as well. Finally, yesterday our paramedics helped in the relocation of the 48 residents from a nursing home in Morwell, and that all went really well. Um, they've been transported to three different uh, nursing homes here in Gippsland um, within about a five hour period. <coughs> and that's about all I've got for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Rosemary Lister. Thanks, Rosemary. Thanks, Craig. So, Rosemary Lester, Chief Health Officer. So, with the welcome progress on the fire, we are seeing air quality be a little bit better today than it has been. Um, but unfortunately, in Morwell South, the air quality is still classified as very poor. So, we would reiterate that our advice for those who are most at risk is to temporarily relocate. And that's fantastic that so many of them have taken up the offer of help from the Department of Human Services to do that and the Department of Human Services has been fantastic in assisting so many people, so many people to date. Our advice for uh, the residents of more, other parts of Morwell or people who aren't particularly at risk remains the same. So if you can, take temporary breaks from the smoke. And we do have the Community Respite Centre in Maui for that purpose. We do know and understand and sympathise with the community that I know many of them are seeing, uh, are experiencing the effects of the smoke in terms of the irritant effects of eyes, nose, throat and, in, and feeling of breathing. However, we must stress that fortunately, and this is very fortunately, we're not seeing severe effects, um, we're not seeing severe health effects. So we're not seeing um, any increase in ambulance call-outs or presentations at the La Trobe Regional Hospital for effects from the smoke. And as you've heard from Paul James, uh, the majority of people coming through the community assessment centre um, have required just basic health checks and, and reassurance. So I'd encourage, continue to encourage those people in the risk groups that we've recommended to relocate to contact the Department of Human Services for assistance. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, obviously there's a lot of good work happening. Um, we must acknowledge uh, our volunteers, so whether they're with uh, Council of Churches, Red Cross, CFI, SES, uh, volunteers are critical and they're doing such a great job and they're in the spirit of uh, making sure that more community is well supported uh, in what is uh, an ongoing issue. Uh, questions? Craig, could you just reiterate the progress on the fire overnight in a bit more detail? Um, what's happened is obviously the, the use of uh, foam, uh, water and in some places ex excavation equipment has allowed um, further suppression to occur. So the northern batters has reduced in the amount of fire that's in there or heat. Uh, that was detected obviously with our, our normal um, thermal cameras that we put over the fire and you can see a significant reduction. If we take you back to the 11th of February, um, the areas that were burning were significant in size and it's been week by week, day by day, shift by shift um, progress. And as we did indicate, we had uh, uh, slow in that progress last week with weather conditions changing. We've done really well the last few days and the firefighters on a 24 hour rotation have done extremely well to now um, bring back uh, the area burnt to fairly small areas but still challenging, obviously, over the next few days. So do you think this is a turning point then? Um, it is a turning point. The, the weekend uh, was, uh, was consolidated to be that fact because the weather is in a better position. Um, we've just got to make sure we hold it if the weather conditions aren't as, uh, as good on, on Tuesday in particular. 
So what are you preparing for on Tuesday? Um, the weather's a, a little bit stronger, that is, the, it's a dry area, so the relative humidity is down, the temperature's up and the wind speeds are slightly increased. So we'll confirm that with the Weather Bureau today, um, but that's obviously in the, in the fire plan, so any weather like that has the potential to, uh, may not be as effective in fire suppression, and we could even see the area increase in size um, to some degree. So, so that's the worst case scenario. At the moment though, uh, let's focus on the good parts and the work that's been done in the last uh, 24, 48 hours has been absolutely fantastic. Given good conditions, are you willing at this stage to put any sort of timeline on the fire suppression effort? Um, we'll review that after Tuesday. Um, I think the key thing we need to do now is make sure we focus on what is Tuesday being um, the day that's got the more uh, worse condition, worse, uh, the worse weather condition. Um, but we're also reviewing with an expert panel our um, suppression strategy tomorrow. So we bring the experts back in tomorrow to, to do a peer review and make sure that we understand um, the methods we're using are effective and if there's any of the experts can advise us. That expert panel includes uh, the Chief Executive Officer from Queensland uh, Mines Rescue, um, the Commissioner from Fire Rescue New South Wales, an independent engineer um, which we've, uh, we've brought into the team and also we're using an expert from um, Texas in USA to peer review the use of, uh, of foams on what is brown coal. So uh, that's important as well to make sure that we take time to reflect the suppression activities to ensure that if there's any modification or any improvement um, that we can we can do that as well. Is that review a standard practice or is it indi indicate that there's some doubt cast on the efficacy of the firefighting efforts so far? Uh, no, it's not a doubt. Um, what we've done, traditionally fire services wait until they put the fire out and then they look backwards to see how well they did it. Uh, we started right on day one of this to say we need to bring people in that no brown coal um, and look at other ways of using technology in the fire in the in the firefight. So, so we have proactively uh, brought that team together, and they've monitored um, along the way. Uh, it's not a doubt about what we're doing. We just want to make sure it's the most efficient and effective way to uh, to manage this fire. You mentioned the Princess Highway briefly yesterday. Are you concerned about that structure? Uh, no, there's been no ground cracking around the Princess Highway and no movement from any of the detectors, and that's been confirmed uh, yet again overnight. Um, with regards to this um, well publicised meeting today in Morwell, um, what would you say to, to residents or what do you think about this meeting that's been organised? Um, well it's been organised by uh, a group of concerned residents and others and uh, we have spoken to them. Uh, I will attend the meeting and give an overarching view of where we are in the fire operations and be prepared to take questions. Um, but we won't participate in what is uh, protest uh, for other reasons. So we'll be there purely to give an overview of the fire operations and where we are. Uh, and obviously there will be a, a mixed um, gathering of people for different reasons at what is seen to be a committee meeting and also a protest.